We acknowledge that we are on Treaty One land, first entrusted by Creator God to the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, the homeland of the Metis Nation. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess there are times when our trust in you weakens and we become anxious about many things. We talk about love, but we are gripped by fear of those who differ from us. We cling to our personal agendas and forget you call us to live as a community of believers. Forgive us for seeking our own interests before the needs of others. Open our eyes to the many signs of your love for us. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, rekindle our passion for you so we can work together to witness to your love. Amen. Hear the words of the risen Christ. Peace be with you. Receive the peace and forgiveness of Christ today and rejoice in his gift of new life this day and every day. Thanks be to God. Now, let's share this peace that Christ first shares with us. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. 
You can share it in the chat, send a text or an email, or plan to call someone later. May this peace abound and be freely given as we have so freely received it. Our first reading this morning comes from Psalm 133. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing life forevermore. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. 
There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This reading is from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this time to dig deeper into your word. May you guide our conversation, Lord, and illuminate those things that we need our attention brought to. Guide us and bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So what we're going to do today, um, we're actually going to have a conversation for our message time. And we're going to look at uh, these three readings that we've just heard. Um, But also, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about a series that we're doing for Eastertide. So this season of Easter that uh, takes place for 50 days um, from Easter to Pentecost. And uh, we're not going right up to Pentecost. We're going to do five Sundays focused around a series called Fully Alive. And so this is going to be, we're going to talk about living lives of unity, joy, restoration, connection, and love. And so each of these next five Sundays are going to focus on a different theme, each of those five themes. Um, and, uh, and that gets us right to Ascension Sunday and then Pentecost uh, after that. Uh, so today's core theme is the theme of unity and what does it mean to live lives of unity. Uh, so what we're going to do to help to introduce that theme and also to help you start to think about what does that look like for us is we're going to look at these three Uh, texts uh, in uh, order of John and then Acts and then Psalm 133. And we'll just uh, have a conversation about these and sort of see how these connect to this theme of unity and how we live that out. Awesome. So regarding the John text, this is where uh, Jesus shows up and uh, appears to the disciples and we find... um, Thomas was missing during this encounter, and he we get the term of doubting Thomas. Um, 
And then Jesus comes back a week later and reveals what Thomas needs to be able to believe, uh, which I think is really cool. What I remember um, about this text is actually last year preaching on this, um, you preached on this. And I remember how, um, you know, Thomas wasn't in agreement of, he was, he was doubting, he was in disbelief about what was going on. He, you know, oh, you guys are pulling my chain or something like that, this kind of feel. <laughs> and yet the disciples allowed him to have the space. I mean, we don't necessarily know what happened, but a week later, uh, when Jesus comes again, Thomas is still there with all of his friends. Right. Um, so I really, that has stuck with me throughout this year. And I've appreciated, you know, thinking about we can have differences, but still be unified. Yeah, I actually think that's really interesting. Thanks for reminding me of that sermon too, because I, I forget what I preach. <laughs> but so I've forgotten about that. But um, it's, it's here like in this text. So if you look at um, verse 26 or 25 and 26. So the disciples are basically trying to convince Thomas um, we've seen Jesus because they have, right? Jesus has shown up uh, in the room with them where they were together. Thomas wasn't there. And, and so they're trying to convince him. We've seen him. And Thomas says, unless I see the wounds and unless I can put my hand in his wounds, I will not believe. And I think the point I made last year was basically like their response to him was not kicking him out or saying, well, you're not one of us then if you don't believe on based on what we tell you, like you can't be part of this community anymore. Mm -hmm. A week later, he's still with, with them and he's still not believing until Jesus shows up for Thomas. And I think that is an incredible illustration of what Christian community is supposed to be. It's actually not just community for, like we often frame it as community only for believers. Yep. And yet here, literally the Easter night and the Easter week, we have an instance of, well, actually, it's a community for doubters mm. and believers together being patient with, with, with one another, right? Like that's, we might be putting a little more in the text than is here, but, but I kind of like to think that, that if he's still with them and then Jesus shows up and he has patience with Thomas as well, and gives him what he needs in order for him to, to realize, oh, right, okay, what they've been saying is actually true. Um, and I think that's a pretty beautiful picture of, of what Christian unity can look like. Um, it isn't just about unity with people who believe the right things, right? Like, it isn't just about unity with e even Christians in the end. Because if we were going to define this for Thomas and say, well, Technically, I guess he's not really a Christian. Yeah, that's in the first week because he right. didn't believe in the risen Jesus. Yeah, but he's still there with mm -hmm. his friends, and he also still wants to be there, which is kind of interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Like he's still with his with his friends. So, what does it mean to have people who would want to be around Christian community? Yeah, um, or what does it mean to have those relationships? Or if someone has like had some sort of major life change or some sort of major like faith awakening or something in their life and they do that in such a way that it doesn't push people away from them but actually embraces even more people like how, how much of that do we see in the world i i just keep getting this this word of curiosity and that there is just such a space uh to allow for it's not necessarily that thomas himself is actually being curious he's doubting Sure. And yeah. maybe he's curious, but, but I just thinking about like the context that we're in now, if people are having these faith awakenings and, and spiritual awakenings, and I think that, I don't know, I feel like there is a call for us to allow space for curiosity to um, be there as opposed to stifling it out. And, and people have questions and say, no, no, this is, you know, this is what the church says about that and putting a stamp on it. I think that allowing space for curiosity invites um, a much more welcoming atmosphere of unity. Um, and, right. and of course, you know, love and all that good stuff. Too. I also think in this text, <laughs> like if we wanted to take this even farther, we could say, okay, so Jesus showed up for the disciples. He, um, he has uh, basically said, peace be with you. He breathed on them. He re said, receive the Holy Spirit to them. Yep. So they now have the Spirit. And then Thomas says, I'm not going to believe so should it like shouldn't the good Christians 
then, the disciples then have said, well, let's try this other argument and let's try this other way of convincing you. And we have the Holy Spirit and you need the Holy Spirit too, so we now don't need to give that to you. Like, shouldn't they have been like overly zealous to try to make Thomas think the way they do or understand things the way they do? But actually the best strategy, if it's a strategy, is ah, a week later, Jesus shows up again. <laughs> like, wait Maybe sometimes it's actually wait to see what God is going to do. Like I love that. sometimes it's kind of interesting to think about like maybe the response when there's pushback from somebody, I, you know, I can't go down that road. I, I, I don't see how Jesus could be raised from the dead or how that makes any difference. Like if there's pushback around things like that, maybe the response sometimes is to say, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. Like, I wonder, what, I wonder what God's going to do with that person that they've had such a oh. negative reaction. Like, I wonder how God's going to show up for them. And that's curiosity. curiosity. I wonder how, oh, I, I, I'm stealing that one. That's okay. a good one. <laughs> that is really good. What I do want to say before we move on to our, our next reading is, I think it's interesting that, you know, Jesus provides what Thomas needs, but I love that he goes on to say, once Thomas believes, he says to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel a little bit for Thomas. That's all I wanted to say about that. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> I, I agree. But also he's sort of like, I think like Jesus is talking to multiple people. He's talking to Thomas, but he's like ha side talking to the rest of the disciples because none of them believed until they'd seen Jesus either. Mm, true that like the week earlier, it's not like they didn't really get anything different than Thomas. I mean, Thomas wanted to actually touch. Mm -hmm. Okay, but they had seen Jesus. But the real side conversation with that comment is to us, to the reader. So John, in writing his gospel, has framed this like this to basically like wink to the reader, <laughs> right? That. And say, like, wow. Isn't it a blessing? Like, because some of it you could look at this and say, wouldn't that be great if we could just have like the risen Jesus show up and we could actually see, wow, that would be so life-changing. And John or Jesus in John is kind of winking at the reader saying, yeah, much, much more blessed are you who believe with, without that even. I think it's kind of, mm -hmm. kind of interesting. So it's not necessarily, a, I don't know that it's a slight to Thomas or the disciples as right. much as it is a way of conveying even more blessing to the readers of the future. Yeah, that's good. And I think it, again, just goes to show like the, the importance maybe of having that curiosity to wonder at what is God going to do? What's the Holy Spirit going to do? And uh, allowing space for that to occur. Um, I like the idea of having curiosity mm -hmm. or, um, and that being a practice of unity. Yeah. Like how, how curiosity can lead to, to unity with other people. Mm -hmm. I like that. All right. The Acts text. Yes. Um, so this is a bit later on. Like there's been, there's actually a lot more people who have started to know about Jesus and, and him being risen. And the day, this is after the day of Pentecost. And we have this incredible reading about them. Uh, having things in common, people selling possessions and selling um, land and houses and bringing that so that that can be shared so that nobody is needy amongst the community. Um, so I think this is a, an amazing unity passage, actually, uh, because it talks about um, people caring for one another in a real way, like in practical ways. Mm -hmm. That would be the thing I took from it. Yeah, well, and I right off the hop um, in verse 32, now the whole group of those who believed, and it's this part, were of one heart and soul. I like that in and of itself. How do we strive to actually share in one heart and one soul, like of Jesus, of to embrace that and to be transformed by that um, so that everybody um, could, could have, like at verse 34, there was not a needy person among them. I just think of how, um, how the, the outpouring of uh, shared possessions, but like the outpouring of love and care for one another, mm -hmm. like you said, I just, I think that's really remarkable. And being of one heart and one soul is like the epitome of, of unity. Mm -hmm. 
and yet everybody would be different. And some would have come from high status, some come from very poor, low status, and all sorts in between, and yet they're totally unified. I, I love this. Yeah, I think, too, like, this connects to the Easter Sunday sermon and about how, like, here's an example of what it means to live out the kingdom of God. So we sometimes think of, you know, the kingdom of God being heaven, um, but but the followers of Jesus are people who are committed to, uh, as I said last week, um, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven is, is really our framework. And this is what they're starting to live out because if they are really truly valuing one another as individuals, like as they're, they're valuing human lives, they realize, well, if, if everyone has value and this new kingdom is this kingdom of peace where everyone is reconciled to one another because of what God has done in Christ, then it's, it's not right for someone to have when someone doesn't have. Like, so it becomes a, it's actually a justice issue. So unity is actually like a justice issue in oh, this text, totally. right? Like it's, yeah. it becomes about inequity between people that they're, they, they end up having like outward signs of their unity by kind of leveling people in, in the community. Yeah. Um, now, I don't know that this is necessarily arguing for, and so everyone gets paid the same amount and everybody like has exactly the same thing, because I think here the onus actually ends up being placed on, um, like in verse 34, <laughs> the way that there is no needy person among them is people are voluntarily going and selling. They're seeing the need and they're seeing that, well, we're one with one another, so... I'm going to voluntarily go and, and help care for you. Yeah. So it's out of this compassion for one another that they start to live out the kingdom life. <sighs> I get but that's also so, super challenging. It is so challenging, <laughs> but it is precisely like a number of weeks ago, um, I, I pointed to, you know, I really am interested in doing the hard work of integrating the kingdom here. And I have a, a wild vision of like what that maybe might look like, who knows as we approach it, but where people's needs are met. And I just, I get this excited feeling of like, now somebody is no longer struggling to make ends meet. Nobody is struggling to provide for their children and the stresses. So all of those things are washed away. Could you imagine, oh, could you imagine how creative people could get how we could collaborate on a completely different realm than what we've been doing because we have these stresses in our life because we aren't completely without need. Mm. I get very excited about it. Yeah. So I think this is, I think this is actually a real picture of mm. living out the kingdom because Absolutely. of, because of their, um, the change that has come in Christ. And I think as well, like the challenge that Jesus brings to the way that the world is structured, because this is actually counter to the way the world is structured. Yeah. And some have looked at this passage and said, like, is this basically instituting communism? <laughs> and I don't actually think that is what's being instituted here, because what we tend to do is we institute human systems, and we kind of have to, like, we have no choice but to institute yeah, human systems. Human. Yeah. Um, and they always end up being broken. So I think part of this too is wrapped up with what the message of the cross is, is this the confrontation that no matter what we do, we will probably end up with a broken system. So even when we try to live out the kingdom on earth, it's probably going to be broken and corrupted. Mm -hmm. And we need constant correction by the cross of Christ yes. in order to, to be able to move past that and also receive the forgiveness for all of the mistakes we're going to make within that system we create. Absolutely. And I think as we continue to move through this series, it's why it's important that we embrace joy that carries us through the challenging right. moments, that there's restoration of relationship, of all of the things um, that we're deeply connected and of course, love above all things. The right? other thing too, is if you read through the rest of the book of Acts, like this sounds this gets quoted quite a bit, this, this passage we've read about believers sharing look like that. things in common. <laughs> but if you go on in Acts, you find that like there's all kinds of problems. So it's like people start complaining about like, well, how come th maybe these people shouldn't be included in the daily distribution of food? And they're mm -hmm. complaining about that and there's disunity. Yeah. Um, and then they find that there's some people who are like, 
pretending that they sold all their property, but they actually kept some of it to look good, and it's a really crazy story. So you can go and read the book of Acts and find that like they were attempting to live it out, and it started off in this pure form, but very quickly, because we're human beings and we're fallen and broken, it it's like we continually need the renewal of mm. Jesus, mm-hmm. um, and not so that we can be perfect in this life because we won't be, but just like we just always need that, like we always need the correction of the cross and the renewal that's in new life in Christ. Absolutely. So this fully alive series is not so much about like oh, well, how do we get back to like Acts 4 and live that out and do that? It's how do we take the principles of this and and live out in our world in a way that is one with others Mm -hmm. and how do we support one another? Mm -hmm. Recognizing that we're going to fall along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's why we need the cross and such good unity. All right, Psalm 133. 133. It's a good one. A quick three verses. Um, so the, and we sang this as well, um, or we will sing this as well uh, in May the Peace of Christ Be With You, of the precious oil that flows down Aaron's beard. And then uh, like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. And we kind of were wondering like, what, what does that mean? What's, what's this about? <laughs> so we discovered that Mount Hermon is, what, how many? Like 9,000? 9, 9,000 feet, I think crazy tall and it's taller than Mount Zion. And so, you know, you think of oil or you think of dew as being like these smaller kind of things or, or not necessarily like a huge amount, but it's not just little bits of dew. It's so much so that it basically pours down and in the heat of summer, um, all of the land gets refreshed um, and revived from this dew that comes down Mount Hermon, which has an ice cap on the top or snow capped mm-hmm. mountain. Um, and it is enough that it actually replenishes the ground, which I think is remarkable and points to abundance as well. Right. And then the same thing with the oil. So you have these two images, right? So there's the dew that's showing up and then this dew is what I always picture like, tiny amounts, right? Like, yeah. But it's not. It's like, picture like water like running down the mountain into the valley and that's what's giving the valley its um, ability to bring life, mm-hmm. right? So that's, I think, with that, that image that's in verse three. And verse two is the image of precious oil on the head running down the beard on the beard of Aaron, running o- o- down over the collar of his robes. And so this is about, so Aaron is Moses' brother, um, sort of, the, the high priest, so he's he's a priest, and then his descendants are going to be priests in the in the the new co- in the in the old covenant, like in the Sinai covenant. He's going to be the, the the main priest, and what they would do is priests would get anointed, similar to ordination for us. Um, kings would also be anointed, and those were used with like it was always used oil. You would anoint the person's head, but it's again an image of abundance because we would normally think of like. If oil is going to be put on someone's head, just put a little bit, you know, or if we, the way we do baptisms for babies, a little bit of water. Um, but we actually want to use ample amount because of that abundance image. Um, and so here, it's this anointing oil that runs all the way down, like it's running into his beard and all down the collar of his robes. It's, it's lots. Um, and so we have those two images. And, and those two images. Now here's what they're I love about, it. right? I love it. Is verse one, how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. This is radical unity. This is abundance. Uh, this is goodness at its finest. This is replenishing of life um, where, where things flourish. Um, all of that. It's just, it's so beautiful to, to think of this experience of life together in unity um, to have this kind of abundance to it. Yeah. I just, another thought that just popped into my head. I'm thinking like Aaron's, Aaron's <laughs> messy. Aaron is messy. But isn't that an interesting thing to think about? About how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity? Oh, and it's messy. It's kind of like this oil that gets everywhere. <laughs> That's good. It's pleasant. It's abundant, but it's also a bit of a mess. <laughs> like, we end up in a bit of a mess together when we are actually living out radical unity. Mm. It's actually not easy. No. Um, 
but it's beautiful and it's and it starts with like when you think again these two images where we started was these are small things or seemingly small things that end up being quite abundant things so the psalmist could have said it's you know like the flow of the jordan river you know after the rains have come and it's the overflowing its banks like but instead it's dew but everyone knows it's an abundance of dew but but dew is also a small image yeah. um the same thing with like the oil it could have picked some other image but it's like this small thing when we anoint people it's you don't use a lot of oil but now the oil is like running everywhere and and so i wonder about unity being also like that mm. like maybe it's in these small acts that end up being far bigger than what we really think they are i just got the image of of people tossing um tiny stones into water and this ripple effect and if everybody was to at the same time you know toss in stones together it would be a much larger impact right sure. than just a small like so just the the image of this abundance that can cause a massive ripple effect of of goodness of of unity yeah we also don't really know what effect we're having on mm-hmm. people a lot of the time mm-hmm. um so it might even be like a simple word that you've said or letting someone know hey i'm here for you like is there anything you need and i know like right now where people are struggling with things um whether that's mental health or grief or loss whether that's life or jobs or trying to figure out like how am i how am i living life now <laughs> um people are still struggling with that and a lot of times when someone will ask hey, is there anything i can do the answer is i don't know or <laughs> yeah. not not really but then i think the practice of unity with one another is to con- is to still ask mm-hmm. right is to because if somebody asks that you're actually showing that hey i i care about you i have compassion for you mm-hmm. um and and i think if we're able within the communities that we're a part of if we can start to be able to not just a knee jerk response no i'm fine there's nothing you can do but actually give it some thought because the practice of unity might also be actually might be hospitable to actually think about it and think well I, no if you're offering you actually could do something for me mm-hmm. what is it that you could do like maybe it really is nothing but maybe there is something that somebody could do for you and when someone's offered like the hospitable thing is to say yeah like actually you can i don't know you you look like i i it. have something i do i do it's in it's the it's an uncomfortable feeling because this requires us to be vulnerable it requires us to maybe actually take a moment to think of like what are the needs that i have and is there something somebody could provide um and and help you know come alongside me in a way um but it does require vulnerability and this is part of the messiness of it is can we can we have the capacity to allow people to be vulnerable let alone ourselves be seen as vulnerable like those are those are not easy things to do but they are how we are fully alive we have to live into the fullness of who we are and god gave us yeah. all of these emotions and feelings to have and uh and so it that this also connects to the acts text and the john text because in acts they knew that people had need and then they provided for those needs right like we're kind of back to that yeah um and then in john as well when you think about it thomas was really clear look my need is for jesus to show up and show me his <laughs> hands and his side and the yeah. disciples basically I mean we don't know what they said but I wonder if they said well look we actually can't do that for you but you can be here in your doubt with us. Mm, that's beautiful. right and that's hospitality that's like hey we can actually be in community we can actually be unity have unity with one another. So I think we need all of that to be happening mm-hmm. where we can um have kindred you know living together in unity with one another. and uh and to have that witness to for one another like we need to be honest about our need um and also honest when with our boundaries of like 
I actually can't, I actually can't do that. I can't, actually can't do that, but I might be able to, but I'm ha- like, I'm able to listen to you or I'm able to be there mm-hmm. in some other way for you. Mm-hmm. So just being clear about those things and, and being okay with that, um, I think is really important. Mm-hmm. I think that's illustrated in our two stories. Absolutely. It feels very harmonious to, to think about all of these things and to move forward as, as fully alive humans that are equipped and given this gift of the spirit of God and how do we interact with one another. Mm -hmm. And so next week we're going to talk about joy is our next thing. Um, So I'm going to be preaching uh, a sermon about joy and how we can embrace joy in our lives, uh, which I think is actually quite an important topic because I think we don't always do the best at um, not just being joyful, but actually receiving the spirit of joy so that we can, so that we can be joyful. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we'll see how these things are going to connect to one another as well, about living a fully alive life. is not about compartmentalizing. Now let's learn about unity. Now let's learn about joy. But actually, true joyful living is actually living one with other people, yeah. right? Living in community. Um, so that's going to be next week. But why don't I pray to close our time together and let's pray for unity. Loving and faithful God, we thank you so much for your Holy Spirit and for Jesus who uh, came into this world and confronted um, powers that divide, um, powers in this world that cause division. We pray, Lord, that we can be repairers of those places where there is division, that we can be one with one another, that we can do that with um, people who proclaim Christ, but we can also live lives of unity uh, with all people, Um, that we can have open arms towards doubters, towards people of other faiths, um, and towards one another, to brothers and sisters, to close family members, to friends. How can we care more deeply and how can we show our compassion Help us, Lord, to be clear about what it is that we might need right now with those who are closest to us um, and allow them the space to help. Uh, Help us as well to to give in such a way that it is a blessing to other people. Help us to serve where there are opportunities to serve. Soften our hearts uh, toward each person that we encounter and allow us to be one with one another and with you. In Jesus' name, amen.
to the dance of kindred hearts and laughing with each other as each one takes their part. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. May the peace of Christ be with you in all you do. The help of the saving Christ the wisdom of the living God and the support of the loving spirit will be with you every step of the way, now and always. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We are so grateful that you've been here and we're so grateful for the continued support that has been pouring out for this ministry of Prairie, this community. And we want to encourage you to uh, to continue to support. Uh, you can go to prairiechurch.ca slash give. But if you are from a different worshiping community and you happen to be joining us in worship today, we want to continue to encourage you to support your home community as well. All right, so we've got some announcements. Uh, so you may have noticed we've had a little shift in how we are doing our emails, our announcements. Uh, we have shifted it to Sundays. We usually just have our announcements on Sundays. They'd be in, printed in the program uh, if we were in person and we'd be talking about them right up on stage. And so we thought, you know what, it makes sense. Let's put the announcements in our Sunday reminder email. And so that's where you can find all of that information. Um, and if there are extra special things that come out, we will be sending those uh, during the week. So if you receive something from us during the week, it's probably really important. So definitely check that out and open those up and find out what's going on. So uh, we have our AGM coming up. This is going to be April 25th, um, following worship. It will be on Zoom. And so that morning, the Zoom link will be uh, provided. And so instead of hopping into the coffee chat, which we encourage you to do this week and next, um, you'll be hopping into the AGM Zoom link. And we will also have, um, or in today's email um, and next week, we will have the downloadable documents for the reports, um, as well as financial statements and the budget. Um, if you have any questions, I believe you can email Terry, but all that information will be in the email for you. All right, so that's kind of really our one, you know, kind of big announcement um, of like normal going on. Um, and now I really am excited to share a bit of a celebration. So small groups, we launched last fall with some training and we started with uh, three groups at the very end of 2020 and we have six groups running and we've got a seventh group that is about to launch. And I'm really excited about this. Um, I'm excited about all of them. The thing that's really cool, friends, is that the diversity of the leadership also is like the diversity is amazing and the diversity of the small groups themselves is really cool. No two groups are alike. And it's really, really a beautiful thing to see, um, you know, the, the buds of the seeds that we planted back in the fall um, starting to sprout, which is really great. Um, so this new group, I'm going to, we're going to do something really fun here. I want to share this flyer with you. And so with the magic stylings of Wesley Keeley, I'm going to try this out. So this flyer is also in the email. Um, and this is a small group that Sarah and Maya are launching, and this is a service based group. So if you have been feeling the nudges of, oh, I really feel like I need to do something and give back or something like that, or if you've been hearing somebody talk about 
these types of things where they're thinking, you know, I really want to serve. I don't know where to start, or I've got all these ideas, but I don't know how to, how to pull them off. This is the group for you or for them. Um, it is open to everybody, any ages. Um, and there is meetings that will occur, um, as planning meetings, and they're going to be focusing on kind of quarterly, um, sprints, I suppose, uh, you could call it. So, if you email Sarah, you're going to get um, all of the information and um, and have a conversation with her, and it's, it's going to be great. So deadline to uh, let them know for this first um, kind of sprint is April 30th, so the end of the month. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to see what kind of you know actions this small group of people are going to engage with um, out there. And there's lots of great ideas, so I'm really excited about that. All right, I don't know how many more times I can say I'm really excited, but I am, and I hope that you are too. And if you've got other questions about small groups or ideas or things you'd like to see happen, please reach out to me, Jen, one N, Jen at prairiechurch.ca. Um, I look forward to chatting with you, and friends, I, I hope that you just stay safe, stay blessed, and just rejoice in this day and, and be filled with joy. Take care, and we'll chat with you again soon.